today I am going to talk to you guys about a super cool tool called Archisynth. And what we're going to do today is actually create a SketchUp model. And we're going to take actual images of furniture that we've selected for a project, turn those images, just literally JPEG images, into 3D models, and then put those 3D models into a SketchUp model for a client. So they're going to actually see the furnishings that we've selected just from an image to a 3D model, put it into a SketchUp model, and then show them that in 3D form just from an image. So it's going to be super cool. I'm actually going to show you guys what this project looked like from concept to completion. So you're going to see the, the full process. I want to give a shout out to Archisend. I reached out to them. I told them that I was really interested in playing with their tool and they gave me free access to be able to share this with you guys. I'm not getting paid to do this. I think it's a super cool tool. And I think if you are using SketchUp, it is super valuable. So all you interior designers, all you architects out there, definitely check this out. I'll talk about pricing in the end. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. We're just a new channel getting new followers. I am talking about AI tools. So if you are interested in AI, if you're an interior designer, if you're an architect or just interested in learning about these tools, follow along. I've got so much more content to be able to share. Here we go. Let's dive in. All right, guys. So just to give you a little bit of background, I want to show you the house that we're actually doing. This is the house as they bought it. And so we are doing a full gut remodel on this. Lots of work being done here. This is just a little bit of context for you. We have built out this SketchUp model of the work that we're doing in here. This is what the SketchUp model looks like without any furniture. And what we're going to do is take this Archisynth program. This is what Archisynth looks like. It's A-R-C-H-S-Y-N-T-H. And I'm going to put that in the notes for this video. Whenever you go in here, uh, this is what the homepage looks like. It does allow you to do renderings as well, but we're specifically using it for the 3D model tool. So if you go to 3D Studio, once you log in, then it's going to allow you to upload files here and a couple different options. It gives you Lumen, which is fast, Saturn, medium quality and Nebula, which is best quality. So that's what I've been doing everything in. Your input type is going to be image. You could also do it based on a text prompt or a sketch. So if you have a sketch of something that you want to create into a 3D model, you could do that. Or if you want to imagine something via a text prompt, that's also an option. But what we're going to do is input this via an image and a single view of a photo. With that being said, I am going to upload this image of this chair. Now, through using this program, what I have found is it is best to remove the background of whatever image that you are uploading. And for example, this is the full picture of the chair that I am inputting in here. I have already gone in and I have taken out the background. If you don't know how to do that, if you go to remove.bg, that is a website, you can just literally drop your photo in and click remove background and then download that image. It'll download it as a .png file, and then that will allow you to remove the background. Super easy tool. But what I found that if you don't remove the background, if there's any shadows in the photo, then it does tend to stump the program a little bit. And then sometimes it actually renders those shadows as part of the model, and that's not what you want. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to change the settings to private. I don't necessarily need everyone seeing my models. And then we're going to click that generate button down at the bottom. It does take usually about 45 seconds. The max I've seen it take is about two and a half minutes. So it just depends on what it is that you are rendering. But um, once you hit that generate button, then uh, it starts to generate uh, your 3D model for you. Okay, so this is what it looks like once it's done. What you'll notice is the shadows do tend to play a part in how it actually renders the model. So you've got this kind of ribbed detail on the back of the chair, and it does tend to make some weird details on there. What I found, though, is whenever you actually upload it into your 3D model, you don't actually notice that as much. And I do have a couple tricks for you in terms of how to negate some of those things. So this is what that looks like. And we're going to just download that 3D model here. So whenever you download it, it downloads it in a .glb file. That's actually never one I've used before, but it uploaded just fine into SketchUp without any problems. So what I'm going to do is actually 
upload that into SketchUp for you so you can see what that looks like. And we're just going to go to import and we're going to find that file here. What you want to do is actually change your supported file type to the .glb, which is right here. We're going to upload. Here we are right here. We're kind of off in Never Never Lands. So what we had talked about in that preview of the 3D model, it had shown that strange effect for the shadows. So what we're going to do first, we're going to delete our little guy. We're just going to erase him and then right click and we're going to explode this guy. And we're going to do it a couple times. Okay, so once we've exploded him a few times, you'll notice it takes all of those lines away. You can just literally keep exploding this as many times as you want so that it looks like you want it to look. But once you take all those shadows away, it actually looks pretty decent. And just to give you an idea of the 3D model versus the actual chair, well, here are those two side by side. And... It's pretty decent. And for us to be able to show a client a 3D model with the actual furniture in there, it's fantastic. This is just one for example, but obviously you can do this for any image. I ran into a couple that gave me more trouble than not. And usually those were the ones that had more geometric details to them. For instance, I'm actually going to go to my history here. And there was one, and viewing it in 3D, notice that it gives me all kinds of weird details to it. This was one that I did not have any luck in fixing, unfortunately, but I was able to actually do its sister, if you will. It's, a, it's one in a different fabric, and I was able to do that one perfectly. So I think there's a little bit of tweaking uh, that I could probably do, but... One thing to note on these is I was actually taking pictures of them in person because these were not ones that we had actually found online. These were physical products that we had found in person. That is just one thing to note. But everything else was able to import properly. And let me just show you guys a picture of the finished model once we were able to upload everything. Using Artisans, I was able to take every single picture of the furnishings for this house and I was able to upload it into the program, turn it into a 3D model, and then put it into this SketchUp program. This is what it looked like in completion. I've got the rug in there, I've got the sofa, I've got the chairs, I've got the coffee table, I've even got this office over here. Kind of go to the side here, zoom around. Here's the office. I've got everything. This is just such a cool program. This is what the house actually looks like finished. Just for comparison purposes here, I'm going to shrink this down for you guys. I just think it's so cool to be able to use a program like this to be able to take actual furnishings, put it into a 3D model, give them a walkthrough. We even put this into our VR headsets and allow them to walk through the house and do this before we can give them this finished product right here. Such a great tool and big thanks to Artisan for actually letting me play with this. Again, I'm gonna drop a link in the notes here at the bottom so you'll be able to take a look at that. But also a couple notes for you in terms of pricing, because I know that's what you guys are probably thinking. If you are a student and you want to play around with this, it's only $9 a month, which is super cheap. For the pro plan, it is $24 per month. And then the business plan is $1.99 per month. So not bad in terms of pricing. Uh, the $24 per month um, pro plan, it does allow you to do the image to 3D, which is what we are doing here. Um, such a cool tool. Another thing to note, if you are a commercial interior designer or a architect, I had worked with commercial firm here locally, a friend of mine who uses Revit, and they were having trouble actually inputting this GLB file into their Revit program. I was trying to see if it worked for them, and they were not able to get it to work. I did try exporting it into a few other formats. We did try a 
OBJ or even an FBX file. And it basically just turned it into a wireframe format and it wouldn't transfer over any of the colors or the details for it. So I'm sure there's a way to do it. I have not figured that out. If you are a commercial designer and you use this program, I would love if you would drop in the, the comments below if you've been able to get this to work for Revit. Otherwise, I obviously know it works in SketchUp and it does transfer over all of the materials and everything. So just food for thought if if you are planning on trying this out to use in Revit. But obviously, ArchiCAD and some of those other programs I know might have some of the same difficulties, but super great tool. I hope you guys will try this out and uh, definitely let me know what you think. Again, hit this like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already and definitely come back for more. I've got so many more AI tools for you. So thanks for joining me today. Hope to see you again soon.